Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey and the Resolves and here we are today in the wake of the crushing news that Ikaria has now been retired but I think there's still a deck where we can give her a go. So today we're going to play some of this uh, Answer the Call Divining Rod deck. Uh, this deck's probably still awful to play and play against but um, we can give it a go just because it's going to be mostly irrelevant that Ikari costs 8 because we are hopefully either still paying 7 with Answer the Call or we're just uh, paying 6 with Divining Rod. It's not too much to say about this deck, uh, it's playing a bunch of power and just there's a lot of overlap in the units in terms of like actual key abilities so either charge or flying um, if you put the rod on a carry it gets to hit anything because it's, she's got flying and charge uh, but yeah I suppose it's actually one different thing we are playing the waste on titan here uh, so once all this card spoiled I was figuring maybe this would be a nice fitting for Soulfire Drake and you know it feels like it is it's a little bit weird where you play it hit the opponent and then you've got the six power and they do the old uh, yeah, the old post combat play dividing rod, but yeah, we'll try it out. Uh, it might be good to just trying to play fair, maybe, but other than that, it's just five sevens, just a huge body. So let's go into the ladder and give it a go. So playing against the opponent. Uh, so I think this is just a redraw, just a single power there, no good to anyone. Uh, this is better. Nice, got the find the way as well. So give me all that greets in here. I've been completely uncertain as to what to play, really. Crest it up. Probably just going to bottom up power, to be honest. Uh, Torch is probably good. Could be wrong with that, but we will... Uh, let's, let's turn these uh, sound fix down just a little bit. Because that's a bit much for me, that. So get our crest on again. Uh, privilege of rank. So we're up to 3, 4, 5, so we don't need that. So let's bottom that. Get to hold up a torch for a teacher. Okay, so no teacher here must be tokens perhaps. Well, we don't want to play against the four drop next turn. I think as we hit our palm, probably just gonna whirl Joe here. And then next turn we should be able to just find the way then. Okay, so even better we could just find both the ways. So we do require the third justice really. Now we need to think about do I want to have a depleted on five and six? And I think I might actually be okay with that because it saves us having to find a way at a later date. So we've got triple triple at this point, so we should be good. We do need triple fire for the waste on Titan. Okay, cool. Well, we're playing against a practice opponent who's stuck on two, so let's just wall them for six. Okay, so here comes the torch. Here goes to sort of like a nuisance body, and that's sort of a unifying force within a deck as uh, it gives every ability in your. Ah, well, this will just crack him. I think with the harsh rule here. Yeah, so just turn this into like a actual vanquish, just if a sandstorm titan turns up, just deal with it. I assume I probably really need the third power and do is kind of like lean onto a really merchant. Yeah. I didn't get to rod, we just did general stuff. Well, that's what more games are for. Nice! Just in time for a really merchant to do one as well. Okay, so our one is absolutely powerful, loaded, but all the wrong sauce. <laughs> so we do need actually a time sauce to make this a functional hand, so I think we will redraw this. Uh, this is mostly fine. Uh, we're going to have additional sort of cards in hand because of the find the way. And then if we do flood, we're able to just like turn it into real things with the one chest merchant. Although I shouldn't talk about the market yet. Agent's Choice is just the way that I'm going to be able to deal with relics, I guess. Probably unlikely to have used this to create Muffle Armor. Answer the call, just want it. Late game, just draw this. Pretty much the same as uh, having an carrier in here, I guess. Like we should just kill Sandstorm Titan, sit wide ban against anyone trying to do anything cool. Uh, so that's probably going to get rid of Azindal. And then just banner for more power, really. 
So let's crest it up. Um, I guess primal sauce with a primal sigil. I suspect we don't need torch. Because uh, what's that going to be like? Maybe Felm or Hero or something like that. I suppose we'll find out. Oh, so it was a Skakridic. With Scale Seeker. Could have killed that. Well, that'll teach me. I uh, do actually want this end of the story on top. And I think I'm going to keep it. And the reason being that it's expensive and it's not something we could play next turn, but it's not much we could play anyway. Probably just going to be playing all those find ways. We've got loads of power, we could just use this to clean up. How many times do I want to get to do this? Three times. It's a real clock that. So maybe this is like a Kennedy's deck or something like that. Uh, it could be some sort of deck that's just playing like Skycrow Dragons. I suppose we'll crest it up again. Uh, do we want to carry? It cost eight, and we've got three, four, five, six power. With potential for eight with privilege of rank. Yeah, that's probably fine. Uh, let's grab a, red, a fire sauce. Uh, because we do have the privilege rank in our hand, I'm probably going to be not fetching up justice sauces. That's another scout to the bottom there, so that's fine by me. Uh, I think we'll just continue finding the way here. I'll just crest, try and find something a little bit spicy. Um, Hashel's probably fine. I'm going to assume that opponent's not going to have many things like in play because they are playing something like Skill Seeker. Feeling pretty demolished by uh, bottoming that torch. But I guess in retrospect, it's probably been fine because that opponent hasn't actually done anything yet. They've just made a 5-5. Five -five. Which we can still deal with with the Winchester Merchant, to be honest. Hmm. Can I do it this turn? So I forgot this privilege of rank here. Oh, I put it in the markets to counter this because I'm fine with that. It's probably just a Wisman Elder's not like a backlash or anything. If I put counters, I'm probably okay with that. Well, I'll get with it. There we go. The old uh, Vira BM emote just to make them speed up a little bit. I know Kanker reasonably nicely now if we need to. Got enough power in hand as well that we can just bomb stuff, to be honest. <sighs> oh boy. Our point is up to something with Waste on Titan. That's just a. Uh, Let's uh, put a stop to that. So maybe our opponent does have a counter spell. Okay, so they definitely don't. So it looks like it must just be a... It's not a card draw spell. Maybe it's like Torch or something. I don't know. Well, We can actually get in there for a little bit of damage with these two. Because I get to game for six. I can torch this. We do know about the torch. If they've got double torch, pull on a double torch Diogo. Uh, but then Diogo's going to put them on a real clock because next turn we can take the turn off just to ultimate Diogo. And this is a Skycrow deck, so even if the Pyrrhon Frost it, I'm probably just going to go for it. Just uh, pay eight to give all my units double damage and charge. So our opponent is. Playing Whispering Wind, so they're definitely playing a deck that is not up to any good. So it's just wallop them for six. I've actually had a lot of fun with Dilgo in the past in like Praxis decks where uh, you just like give your uh, Heart of the Vaults double damage and charge. That is a lot of damage out of nowhere when you get to do that. So maybe we we'll get to see what our opponent's up to here. Uh, I think we're just having it. Ooh, Kindle. Okay, so this is Sidder's deck maybe? Oh yeah, double damage your carrier. Slash you, slash you on the left. Let's have a crest first, see what we're going to be buffing. Yep, not crest of impulse, thank you. Let's get in there, just like nug them for a million damage. Have to block something. Probably going to be a carrier to take six, but then we've got a 10-5 in play. Yeah, the opponent gives up. So Cinder's deck is actually really cool, and I think what the... 
the plan is is just to make like an early uh, Molotnik over and then just like make more of it. But yeah, never actually played against it before. Just when I saw the Kindle, I was like, yeah, you're up to something. We're just queued into the same opponent. Or was that the other game? Okay, so we're one game apart. So this hand, we're on the play. We do get to crest and try and find a time source. We get uh, two cards plus two locks. So I think I will keep this because once to find the way it gets going, uh, we shouldn't be concerned at all about power. Uh, justice, it's so. I do want a bottom non time power, but it is also a power that helps us get the uh, Kano banner. So I will keep it in this instance. But it could very well just be a mistake to keep that. I think we are one. Ah, yeah. So this is the first round where they played Praxis. And I uh, didn't have a great time. Maybe this is just like karma coming back to get us. So that is a Sea Glory, and I don't think I want that. Okay, well, end of the story on top. Nice, nice. Uh, we're probably trading something away uh, just to get a Mechano Banner here. What are those round points playing? So, do we need two wraps? Maybe. Do we need back to back wraps? Probably not. Uh, being able to play our spells is probably a lot more important here. So at this point, even if we don't find a time source, like a privilege rank is still fine because it gets us up to being able to play this harsh roll into the answer of the call. Answer of the call obviously just like fixing our influence like to the max. Hmm, well, feeling pretty silly about bottoming that power. Could have used it for the fifth just to play harsh roll, but yeah, I'm happy not to just harsh roll this board. Our point is gonna get the discount here because they're just gonna torch away. I'll go torch in there. But they are going to get the discount anyway because probably not blocking. I'll just uh, wait a turn on this. Although if we actually draw any power that lets us harsh, well, maybe it's fine to do this. But we do have the out of drawing a torch, so yeah, let's let them hit us. Uh, they do get a discount, but the at the point where it might not matter because they should be like six power next turn anyway. It's just if we get to double spell, that's going to be awful. Okay, we're not going to get attacked for one. Cool. Okay, so see if Impulse is here. Start fetching up power, I guess. A uh, couple of times to look of why not. Actually, don't mind if our opponent goes absolutely ham now and puts a load of stuff on the board because we just get to harsh wool. Uh, just got a fire sigil. Don't forget Mars at this point. We're not playing Heart of the Vault in this deck, so. Honestly, it just doesn't matter. Just try and set up like the harsh rule into Answer the Call. And that should be it if we manage to hit. Okay. Come on, play some it. Well, I'm snap blocking here. Still snap blocking. I think this is our way of <laughs> staying in this game is that we just uh, don't let that trigger happen again. They've already had their one zero cost. And we've got a nice tidy little like million tier for one. So that's Tash will here, play all depleted. So point does have another torch, it looks like. Sadly, you carry cost eight now, because they will hate fun. Although it's, it's probably actually correct that that happened. Okay, so got a kill up here. Um, we're in bad shape because we've got an unanswered owl head here. But I'm just going to try and go for this answer the call here. Let's see how far we get. Oh, okay. Well, waste on time is good, just gets more things in board. So I will just hit here, go up to eight. And then do we just, oh we, oh we don't yeah because it just replaces itself, we don't go up to eight. Hmm. Well I guess we're just doing the answer the call here. For some reason I fired like a undepleted power before I play, but yeah let's put the carrier into play. And uh, do we get a weapon on her? No. And yes yeah, so you saw that right, the old uh, post combat answer the call with charge units now deck. Well I just want to have two things in play and then next turn it's going to divine you about this. And hopefully get more things. The hits have started to come now with the, uh, the owl head. Okay, so kill owl, owl head's going to do some work here. Hmm. 
rats. <laughs> okay, so Caleb. So we've started. What weapons did we get? What? You gain health equal to the wielders. Are we here divining rod? <laughs> we divining rod it into a divining rod. I'm so sorry, opponent. That was just mean. And then post combat, it's like do more stuff, I guess. Just that feels so bad for opponent. <laughs> The first game just got like completely like influenced power screwed, and then the second game we randomly acquired a divine rod on Caleb. What is this deck? Oh, okay, so this sounds potentially quite good. Um, if we do struggle for power, we can fetch one with uh, Winchester Merchant. Though that is a little bit slow, but. I think we can keep this because it's got like a cheap insight to spell, got merchants get something for missing it, and we've got end of the story as well just to clean up. I am gonna crest it. I don't care what my opponents on. Um uh, don't want second search. Do want more power. Or just like any sort of power search would be fine. Okay, so as for the call is a tasty top end, but Also against like a, a slow slow scar deck, so hopefully we should be okay in this sort of matchup. So it's could be like Grandins or it could be some sort of like Stone Scar sort of control. Um Fire is really good. Okay, so it's like more Grandins are like an aggressive deck that just had a real bad curve. Okay, so this is fine. So now we've got like an interesting Winchester decision. Like I don't feel like this divining rod is gonna stick around, but it's cheaper than answer the call. But we're grabbing a power, so why not? It's also sort of loose to play the Rokano banner after, but yeah, things get torched. So let's go as a smart and thin to get rid of the divine rod. We can't actually get the divine rod back, which is sort of awful. Torch tells me this is a more aggressive deck though, because Grandis usually doesn't play that because it doesn't need to. Oh! Grand in tribal. Right. Well, I'm not gonna just like torch half of a card. That's just uh not something I'm gonna be doing. We'll however just uh let our opponent try and deploy more threats to the board. As long as they Oh. Okay, so maybe this is like a Stone Scar sort of grindy burn deck, maybe playing like Brimstone Altar. This lot is actually that's a lot of reach and it does some real work as well. Um, I am just going to use like the most expensive one here though. Let's use the six cost, just wipe everything out. Got like a a three for two really because we have to use the torch just to get rid of the, the three two flyer. It's like a Delbra secret. No, thank you. Uh, we'll take it seven. Yeah, it's fine. A lot of problem put more in play. Um, they play like a, a charge unit when in trouble because uh, the Barbarian Camp stacks quite a lot. Also, Barbarian Camp uh, functionally the same as uh, Xenoblus for the most part when you play it with a, for a quick strike, uh, quick draw units. It's like I wish that all games would just have like one word for the thing that it does because <laughs> it's like trying to call this quick strike. Yeah, not quite. Ooh. Well, that's a free card, so I'll play that. Guess that probably just got like a handful of interaction. Feels like there's a fast spell there, so. Maybe it's got stuff like Annihilate and Torch and all that, and hopefully we're just going to make that bad. Um, the old version of this deck that had like uh, a Lure and Ember were. Ooh, what we're getting back. Probably just going to try and wipe the board again. And she's too big to riz on. Yeah, we can't raise this, that's just nonsense. Yeah, it's just like, do we play the Wasteland Titan and then put like a Divine Rod in post combat? Just like, no, we don't do that. We just we just kill the thing that would have killed us, the 8 4 deadly quick draw. Especially because, like, given that virus favor, plus we know. Oh, we are pretty certain. 
Caleb, oh, Caleb on top. I need you one card deeper, mate, so I can get you to answer the call. Actually, our last one would have been pretty explosive. Uh, we'll keep it just because. I probably probably got a quick charge. Well, probably probably got charge units, but let's uh. Let us just uh, rod here. Because if we get that Caleb, the old uh, post combat Caleb, yes, yes, you've heard it here first. Oh, boy. <laughs> the old uh, Only Moon here as well, nice. Exhaust unit, uh, Gleam Shield. Oh. Actually, Spellcraft is sort of cool with uh, Caleb, isn't it? If you can actually afford to play him. Hmm. Well, I put us probably dead, so we're in a good shape. So we've just got like 10 power on block over here. Uh, I don't want to say good game, it's a bit too BM that. I say oops. <laughs> well, I guess we're waiting for our opponent to uh, recover from the, the shock of seeing someone in 2018 playing <laughs> multiple 8 drops in their deck that doesn't ramp. Also, this uh, stream was brought to you by Cherry Cola, which is the best Cherry Cola. Well, the best cola. Actual favourite flavour in the world. I don't actually like Coke, but Cherry Coke is just... It's so good. It reminds me of like Keenan and Kel, but not orange soda. That's probably aged me quite a bit, hasn't it? Hmm. So, point here doing the old uh, Ropa, and I don't blame him for a second because this deck is just like ridiculous to play against. Cause it's just like, oh no! Well, that's getting blocked by a two-one. Oh, can they give it trample though? Or oh, can they give it over one? Have they played any standards? Uh, they have not. Do we want to play around standards? Okay, so they didn't have the Shugo stand the Shugo standard to give it over one, but still needed to actually play around that because that's how we lose there. Otherwise, they won't just concede, you know. If they honestly just can't win, they just go, yeah, just skip it up. They don't make that attack unless they have something, so they must have realised that either they've got a Shugo standard or they just realised that, yeah, we're going to put enough things to block it so that we don't die, but we still kill you. So, that's the, the last one. Okay, and here we are for the last game. Our opponent is clearly the devil with the uh, triple six. I was going to redraw this, just one power. Uh, the redraws in this game seem pretty straightforward. It's just like, is two or less power? Then ship it. Probably going to crest here. Doesn't, okay, it doesn't matter what our opponent's on. Just want to find power and stuff. Also, for a little bit cheaper. Got the top end, really. I should cost eight, though. See how uh, Predatory Carnosaur got plus one plus one for the cost, but a carry didn't. Yeah, not salty at all. So I promise I'm rocking the uh, the old school card back. So it's a lot to be said for that card back as well. It's actually. I think we're playing with it for like a. Oh, we'll keep the Justice Sigil actually. Uh, we're playing with it for like over a, a year, I believe. I can't remember when actual card backs came in. So, double primal sources. Hopefully we've got a nice slow opponent here. Well, we'll keep Winchest because Winchest is basically anything we want. Uh, might be citywide ban. Okay, so we are playing against the Felon here. Oh, it's like a beatdown Felon, okay. Well, again, don't really see us playing the Divining Rod, and I really want the power. Uh, that's what Caleb's probably not as good, though. Probably, if our guy survives, I do want to have the Divining Rod, don't I? Let us just grab. Do we just grab a City Ban? If I promise playing that, like, what's the most expensive card in the deck? It could be Rindra. Rindra's not an issue, just, like, end of the story. Do we want more power? Uh, we've got a lot of power search in the deck, so maybe we don't. Well, I think it's a sort of a tie up here between like City White Banner and Ricano Banner. Yeah, it's got Banner. It does seem a little bit weird to sort of like get rid of an 8 drop. Um, should have perhaps what he carry because we can get it back later. Yeah, snap block. Um, 
Pucker wall leader is actually, oh dear. Well, I believe that we had death then because we're playing a scream. <laughs> scream is just going to go under us, over us, around us. It's going to outcard us. Uh, we're going to get absolutely slaughtered here. But we'll play it out, you know. There's a chance, there's a chance our opponent might just brick. Uh, they'll do sort of want to draw like uh, William Joe or Diogo. At this point, it's actually Diogo, just so we can attack into the free team. Because uh, Diogo into a Divine Ward could be pretty cool for us. Oh, okay. So our opponent didn't get a unit because we would have played the Xenolast last week first. So maybe they've got like Rain of Frogs there. Just going to frog those next turn, just, I don't know, take anything here. Not sure it doesn't matter. Um, our end of the story is going to be completely embarrassing next turn because it's just going to leave our opponent with this free take. Also, they're playing Heart and Scream, um, no doubt, because you generally don't just play Gargon Fnatic just as a, a draw sum. Okay, so they didn't ultimate the Xeon last week because they must have other plays to make. Oh, Marl. Okay, well. Well, let me just say that um, Ikari did nothing wrong. Our opponent just used a card that was twice as good as the old Flame Blast. Yeah, you got me, Tiger. Nice play. So, and they did it without even getting Nightfall as well. They just mauled us for 12. That was absolutely fantastic. I suppose I do deserve that for some of these Okay, games. so here we are again at the end of the games. Just went a nice 4-1, I believe. Um, this deck's probably fine. <laughs> Answer the call is a little bit uh, spicy. Uh, I don't think you really saw it in this game, in this uh, set of games, but I was playing it earlier and it whiffed like twice and I was just like, good, good, feeling great about my life right now. Uh, so maybe this needs to be cut, but I was actually crafting these because I was thinking of brewing something up with um, Hard Plunderer, but then you just never got to seven. Either your opponent was dead or you just died yourself because you're playing a Hard Plunderer deck. <sighs> Sadly, no one's managed to crack yet. But yeah, I still want to be able to find ways of being able to play cards like a carrier, even though it just does cost more. Um, you're probably not going to see her played in it's like the Rakano Valkyries anymore. Maybe it's like a top end where it's like a one or two of. Maybe it's just going to get replaced by Teller because Teller in a deck with lots of flies is really good because your main flyer that attacks, which is probably going to be Baby Carrier, has got endurance, which is going to get bigger. All of your opponent's units are going to get smaller and just going to make them eventually just be unable to sort of ever attack you back as we saw in like the video from the other week where there's multiple talents and it was just absolutely demolishing our board. Waste some time as well. Um it's actually a really exciting card. But I'm not sure if this is the correct place for it because it's all sort of like uh, getting the power back at the end of your turn. All the things have got like charge and stuff um and our big spells like uh, board wipes. So uh, maybe we don't need that. But postcard but answer the call just to sort of try and fill up your board is nice but yeah generally might be better just to play it. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I've been That Resolves, and I'll see you around.